Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Yard. So, look at these potatoes. They're almost two feet tall. Look at this. They're starting to flower. That's a lovely potato patch right there. And you might notice there's some white stuff there that's not mold or anything. That's actually some diatomaceous earth. I threw some diatomaceous earth down between the rows to try to uh, uh, discourage the pill bugs from eating at the potatoes. I had a lot of problems with that last year. So I kind of washed a little bit of diatomaceous earth down there into the mulch. But look at these. Isn't that great? Let's see if they're growing any actual tubers. Let's actually check under these uh, older potato plants. So I'd imagine the tubers on these are just about ready. You can see their leaves are starting to yellow. So that tells me they're getting to the point where they're just about done. There's a purple potato. Huh, that's not bad. Looks like I tore the skin a little bit pulling it out, but there you go. It's a nice edible potato. Hopefully I'm gonna have lots more of these here in a little while. So here's the sugar beets. You can see the sugar beet plants are coming up around there. Unfortunately, it looks like the majority of the seeds I planted didn't actually sprout. It's probably because the seeds were a couple of years old. So I've actually gone through in between them and planted some more seeds and hopefully that'll increase my numbers here. Yeah, they're, they're about an inch tall. So here's the hydroponic system. As you can see, the plants have grown up quite a lot, and I've pulled out all of that straw. Uh, the straw, you know, sounded like a great idea because it's lightweight and it holds moisture, and you know, it has a low nitrogen content, so it won't rot very quickly. But one thing I failed to take into account was the fact that I'm pouring nitrogen-rich liquid over top of it. And so, uh, and so the other day I found the uh, fish gasping for air, and it was early in the morning, the water was cool and being agitated. There's no way that there should have been a lack of oxygen for the fish. But I realized this stuff was starting to rot and it was absorbing all of the dissolved oxygen. So out it came. And uh, I've been replacing all of the straw and even a lot of the sand with gravel. I ended up just ordering another cubic yard of gravel. So here's the gravel pile. I've uh, sort of parked my truck up against it. It's made of the same stuff the sand was, but of course the particle size is now about three-eighths of an inch rather than you know into the millimeter range so the water flows through it a lot better it doesn't hold the moisture as good so it's harder to get plants to start with this but it doesn't flood out these buckets here I haven't quite gotten around to filling up with gravel I uh, haven't quite decided what I'm gonna plant in these probably just carrots or something if I can figure out a way to get them to actually start growing so a lot of this stuff is actually ready to be harvested. So I think I'm going to do a quick little harvest here and get those peas and some of these peppers and maybe a couple tomatoes. Let's see what we get. All right, let's pick some of these uh, peppers. The size of these things. Isn't that great? Let's see, I might let these go a little bit longer. I picked the bigger ones. Looks like there are a few tomatoes ready, just the cherry tomatoes. Like a couple of strawberries. All right, let's see, you can see these uh, cucumbers there, which have grown almost to the top of that uh, trellis. And uh, here's everything that I harvested. I think I'm going to take this in, weigh it, and uh, tally everything up because I want to keep track of how much food I produce this year. But first, let's go put the fish back in the water. Put the boards away. And, uh, just drop the bucket into the rest of the pond. Then I'll swim out. There you go. All right, fish are back in the pond. Alright, so here we are inside. I've got a scale, which was originally used for babies. We're just going to put all this stuff on there. Potato. Let's see just how much we got. This is in uh, kilograms. 
a bunch of greens here. I'm adding this all to the weight. Looks like just under a kilogram of food that I've grown so far. You notice I've got a, a green tomato here. I am adding this to the weight because, well, I accidentally knocked it off the vine, and you can still eat it, you know, fry it up. There you go. It's a kilogram of food so far. And this is probably the smallest harvest we're going to have. Most of this we'll probably just eat right away. The peppers and strawberries. Uh, the uh, hot peppers like this and the jalapenos, I'll probably slice up, dry out, and make pepper flakes out of them. That's probably what's going to happen to most of those. Okay, go for it. <laughs> okay, bye. How was it? So much better than store bought. Right? That's ripened on the plant. <laughs> <laughs> so something really weird is going on with my bees. I've got this lamp here, and I'm just uh, using it for light so I can time lapse this barometer. And the bees have been coming in and banging themselves to death against this lamp. And actually, look inside of there, you can see there's a whole bunch of dead and dying bees. I've never seen bees do this before, and it seems to be getting worse. You're probably not going to be able to tell on video, but this street lamp here has got bees buzzing around it as well. Look at that. A lot of them too. So it's not just my lights. You know, don't just, like, isn't it moths that do this? Not bees. Bees are usually sleeping at night. So I set a flashlight in a trash can outside. And look at this. The bees are just going all for it. This is crazy. It's like a few of them are like dying right here. All right, so it's been a couple of days since my last cut. As you can see, I've turned this lamp off and I've cut short my uh, time lapse video. I wanted to capture a storm, you know, so we can see how the barometer relates to a storm, but uh, that's not going to happen, I'm afraid. You can see I've also uh, sealed up this uh, window here so no light can get out if I ever turn a light on in there. And as you can see, this beehive is right here. So I've realized this whole thing was probably my fault. I had that light on inside the garage and the light must have been shining on the hive and they were thinking it's daytime. You know, and since I've uh, turned off the light for a couple of days, you notice the bees aren't coming out after me when I've got this light here. So, looks like it's not zombie fly. Although, yeah, I was uh, certainly afraid that it was for a while. Alright. That's a little bit of a lesson. Don't turn any lights on next to your beehive, otherwise uh, you might wind up with all the bees leaving because they think it's daytime and it's not. I did save all these bees though. I think I'm going to send them into the bee lab and have them checked out, you know, just to see if there is any zombie fly. You know, I could still be wrong, I guess. I was amazed at how many people are still interested in these blocks, so I think I'll close up here giving a quick update on these. So this one, all the shrimp are dead, but there's still some green algae, so you know, there's something living in there at least. And this one here that I actually made on camera, uh, everything in there died. Uh, it never really got started. I think the mistake I made was I used uh, chlorinated tap water. So there you go. But I've uh, dumped out half of the original water and then put some fresh water in with some dechlorinator. Also a little bit of algae. And there you go. This is about a few days in. It's growing. So I'll probably uh, do another video on these at some point, but there you go. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.